Welcome back. In the last clip we saw what Brush 1 can do and what all the various sliders and settings can do. Now let's see what the rest of the 17 brushes look like grossly without doing too much adjustment to them. You get to do that with your own images. So have fun playing. Okay, so now we're going to test all the different brushes and we'll test them at low, uh, medium, and high brush strokes. Uh, so this is a picture of a child's face uh, cropped, and we're looking at it at 300%. Probably to you it'll be, look more like 150. But we're going to turn on, I, I've already uh, loaded impressions uh, in Topaz Studio 2. And if we click on that, it brings up all the details of what's going on uh, with the, this filter. <clears throat> so we're starting with brush number one, type 01. It would be nice if they renamed these <laughs> uh, to something more meaningful. Uh, and we're at low brush strokes. We have areas of dark, high contrast, and low contrast to compare, and then medium contrast uh, between these areas. So you can kind of get the idea of what this brush does. And right now the brush size is at 50% and paint volume uh, is relatively low, but I turned the paint opacity up a bit so that we could see the shape of these brush strokes a little better. If we turn the paint volume way up, we'll probably get uh, more detail in those brushes, as you can see here. And on some of the brushes that works out pretty well. On others it adds uh, too much artifact. By the way, I have turned the texture of the background to original uh, so that uh, we don't have gaps as we get into these finer brushes. So that's uh, type 1 at low, at medium, number of brush strokes, and high number of brush strokes. This would be more like a Rembrandt, and this more of an impasto uh, type stroke. Okay, so now let's come up and compare brush type 1 to brush type 2. And here's type 2. It's a little skinnier uh, brush, and uh, still have nice little bits of detail in those brush strokes. Remember, if we come down to 100%, uh, some of those details will not look as harsh. And if we reduce the paint volume, again, we can get rid of <clears throat> some of that. Let's, let's just set this at about... 60% or so. And then let's look at type 2 at medium. Hello. And at high. And now I'm finding this to be a bit rough. I'd probably turn down that paint volume. But we're going to go up and look at type 3 at low. It has a bit more fall off at, at the edges at the start and finish. Medium and high. Again, on this high, I would probably lower that paint volume. All right, so now let's go to type 4. This is more of a chalky, dry brush stroke, if you will. And I would probably go really low on some of these settings to get that chalk feel. That's at high. This is at low. 
medium, and high. Here's a little heavier dry brush, like uh, charcoal or something, at low, medium, and high. If we bring these opacities back up, we get quite a, a different feel. So you can see you just have to play with settings. Experiment, find the look you're going for and for the image size you're dealing with. It's going to look different. Okay, so uh, this is adjusting brush strokes on type 6. That's another adjustment you could be making. Let's put it back to 50% for comparison. Low, medium, and high. And if we go back and bring up the paint volume, we can see that there's less detail inside the brush stroke. Okay, type 7 is more of a smooth sketch type of look. And for that, we would probably bring down some of these settings as well, and maybe the brush strokes. You can see some curly cues introduced by it, just like this drawing here. Bringing up uh, the large brush volume here, you can see a lot of artifact being introduced. So. Always zoom in and see if it's doing what you want. Same thing with the paint volume. Medium and high. A straighter brush stroke on low. Very nice. Medium and high. And again, we're using a pretty low opacity and, and volume. And you can see why. <laughs> All right, uh, next type. Is type nine. A um, little more spatter like you're pushing a dry brush into the canvas. And low, medium, and high. Type 10. I'd probably start bringing that volume up again. Maybe the paint opacity. Low, medium, and high. On high, I'd probably bring that down a little bit. It depends on the look you're going for. If you want harsh strokes like that, you can do it. But uh, I think it's a stroke uh, for a, a more real, realism type of painting. <clears throat> Here's the one next to it. Uh, we're on type 11. Low. Medium. And high. And then uh, type 12, I sometimes use uh, for watercolor, sometimes type 9. Um, so let's look at type 12 at low. And for watercolor, you definitely want to go with low volumes and uh, maybe a lower paint opacity. It depends on if you're looking for that watered down uh, watercolor look or you're going for uh, a very strong, uh, like a 
Homer or something like that watercolor. Here's another brush. We're on 13 now. Let's take the opacity up to see what that stroke really looks like. Low, medium, and high. This is the sketching one, uh, type 14, I like a fine pencil. And if I take that texture back to original, uh, from original to solid, you'll see what I'm talking about with those pencil lines. And uh, to fill in the canvas, you're going to have to probably come up with a bigger brush size and uh, work with your stroke width and length, perhaps. Uh, adjust your spill to your taste. Trying to get the look that you want. And uh, sometimes I turn up that paint opacity to fill in. But remember, it's supposed to be a sketch. It's not supposed to be solid necessarily. You can go as detailed as you want. Low medium, and high. Another thing I sometimes do uh, with sketching and some of the other effects is to uh, come down to uh, painting progress and take it down. And for some uh, paintings, that's really cool. Uh, you get a very rough sketch look medium and high. And of course you can smooth out those strokes like a softer pencil or liquid pencil by adjusting smudge and get something wild like that. So let's bring the painting progress back up. <clears throat> and then pointillism, little dots. Uh, so this would be like oils uh, Surat, perhaps, and bring up the painting volume to see those dots more. Bring down the painting volume to see less of that detail. Bring it down the paint opacity to soften it. But uh, to get a harsh pointillism, I would do that. And there's medium and high. So this, uh, I would probably go on high for this image. All right, we have just a couple left and I can see by the image here that this should have more opacity at the edges than in the center. Uh, so we'll see if we can exaggerate that a little bit. Let's go to low and really bring that out with paint volume. And the paint opacity is pretty hard. So I can see down here definitely we've got a little more edge to it. Here you can see more edge. And I'm not sure I like it quite that heavy. That's at low, medium, and high. So if you want uh, daubs of paint where you're pressing with the brush in the center and squeezing more paint out towards the edges. That's a good one. And here's just a, a more diffuse splat, I guess, where we're getting uh, little brush edges coming out all around, little filaments of hair. Um, low medium. And it looks like medium would be great for this brush to get the detail of it and high. Okay, so that's running through all 17 of the brushes. Well, that was tedious. Now let's see the brushes in action. This could be more fun. Please proceed to the next clip in the playlist.